And under the group path command now, uh, the way this tool operates is that we have the ability to select airplanes from a group, or we can browse a library to select individual aircraft, or we can add airplanes from an existing session. In this case, what we want to do is we'd like to go and grab our analysis group for group five and six, the larger aircraft that are in here. We could remove them from the group if we don't want them to be included in the study. So for example, if I have a 777-300ER in here that I did manually, I could pull it out. Although if I want it in the combined results, I'll keep it in. When we go to start the path, we have the ability to change our tracking between cockpit center or nose gear. We have the ability to specify the elevation being either at Z0 or some fixed height above, and the ability to either click on path geometry and draw a new group path session following predefined path geometry, or open up an existing session that we've created, in this case, the 777-300 from the runway to the east taxi lane. And if I use the existing session, it'll take this movement and it'll have all aircraft follow the same predefined geometry. We get an option whether or not we'd like to show or hide the original session. We're just simply using it as a reference for the other maneuvers to go through. So I'm going to hide the session. Its visibility will be suppressed. And the software will go through and calculate and show for this multiple group of aircraft on the path, the cloud for the aircraft at the start. This gives us the outermost extents of all wingtips or fuselage or tails. And now we get to go into taking a look at whether or not we're going to uh, do some conflict analysis. So whether or not we're just visualizing a group movement or if we're actually testing it to some geometry. Remember, under the settings command for conflict analysis, we had specific layers that we've identified that boundary case geometry is on, being the, the taxiway edge, the shoulder edge, or the taxi lane edge. So if I turn on the main gear clearance, it will evaluate the main gear envelope to that geometry on the layer that's marking the edge, and it will highlight in the drawing for us any conflict areas, both with a notification and with some warnings listed in the interface for which violations have occurred. So we can zoom in here and see where the conflict is starting to occur from the PCC edge. The main gear for this group of aircraft has a violation of this area that would need to have structural concrete put into it. We can look at the results in here, and if we sort by pavement conflicts, we can see the A34600 having the most conflicts out of the group. We also have a 7779 with its extended wings having a similar set of issues. And then as we start going down, less and less. Um, we could further go through and adjust, uh, adjust the conflict detection to look at the engine path for the shoulders. Now it's testing the inside shoulder. And we could also do the taxi lanes, which may take another moment here to process. So here we go, session manager uh, for this session. So we find my pavement edges here. I'm gonna make those all be magenta and apply. My shoulder edges, I'm gonna make those all green and apply. And my apron limit for the taxi lane, I'll make that cyan. I don't have a particular marking for that. I believe it's white, but I'll make it a cyan one to show out. And that's going to be back down in the stand area as we, we zoom over and take a look. So now we've got something a little bit more in here that we can work with. Now, these hatches can be copied out of the sessions using something like the end copy command. And with the hatch itself, there will be a bounded area that has a property of area. And if you select all of them, which I'll show an example in a little bit, um, you can get the cumulative area, which will help you with your estimates. So very quick and powerful in terms of being able to allow us to go through and assess where any of the violations are occurring. So as we come along into the apron area, if we have any violations of the non-movement boundary because of the wingtip clearance that'll show which suggests potentially things like the taxi lane needs to get moved over which has the implication that the edge of that concrete and shoulder all need to move out with it or you need to determine if this marking can move in if there's actual clearance to push everything in based on the size of aircraft that are being handled there Certainly because we're in the same drawing if we did go back and go to my stand session and take a look if the triple seven was the critical design aircraft and this was the last tail position 
then there potentially is some room that the apron extents could come back in to not have a violation. So it all depends on, on what you're testing, right?